Hey everybody, Jennifer here with The Family Fudge and welcome to Bunches of Lunches. In today's video, I have a very spooky Halloween lunch marathon to share with you guys. And even though I know Halloween might look a little bit different this year, I hope that these lunch ideas will inspire you to make some spooky Halloween treats for yourself at home. Now, if you love all things Halloween, definitely give this video a big thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button if you're new. Now, at the end of last week's video, I asked you guys if you wanted to see my Halloween decorations and so many of you said yes, so Lily and I are gonna take you on a little tour. Now basically when it comes to Halloween decor, I think I keep things pretty minimal. And overall, I really love Halloween decorations that are cute and fun. I'm not into really scary or gory decorations. I do like to keep all of the Halloween decorations downstairs. There aren't any upstairs this year. I did go with a white, black, and orange theme. And of course, I am a huge fan of gnomes for all seasons. Now, I did add a couple of new things this year, including the bats on the staircase. I just love how this turned out. It was actually really easy to do. This year, I also added this really fun pumpkin. You actually fill it with water and it has a green light and a mister inside. And then another thing I added this year was the big spider. And you guys, this scared Mackenzie so bad because she does not like spiders. Now, I would love to know in the comments down below whether you celebrate Halloween or not. And if you do, what kind of decorations do you prefer? And now you guys, without further ado, let's get on to this Halloween lunch marathon. And I'm sharing my absolute favorite Halloween lunch ideas. Today's lunch is going to be meatless and I am super excited to be giving this new baking pan a try. I ended up finding this on Amazon. It was a little on the pricey side, but I do have to say the quality is really good. This is a nice sturdy pan. It should last a long time. Now there are a lot of different things I could make with this pan, but for today's lunch, I'm gonna start by using two cans of pizza crust dough. So before I can add the dough to my pan, I, I am gonna need to roll out the dough just a bit. And just to make sure this dough doesn't stick, I'm gonna roll it out onto a floured surface. And I'm actually gonna be using both cans of dough for this. I'm gonna cut both sheets into six pieces. Now before I get the dough into the pan, I do wanna go ahead and spray that with a little bit of non-stick spray as well. I definitely want these to pop out. And now I'm going to very gently add the dough to each little section. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add two pieces of dough per section. Now speaking of the filling, I'm going for a pizza flavor here. I'm gonna start by adding a layer of shredded mozzarella cheese, followed by about two tablespoons of pizza sauce. Then I'm gonna top that off with one more layer of cheese. Now if you wanted to, you definitely could add some pepperoni in here or basically any pizza topping you like. Now I'm gonna take these extra pieces of dough here and I'm going to fold them over and pinch them together. Okay guys, so I took these out of the oven and they've had time to cool down just a bit. It's now time to take these out and see if they work. Whoa, check it out you guys. This turned out better than I thought it would. You can definitely see the skull face in here. It's not burned, it's not undercooked. I definitely would call this a success. So now that the main course is done, I'm gonna move on to the fruit and a veggie. For our fruit today, I'm keeping it super simple. I'm just gonna add a combination of red grapes and green grapes. And to dress these up a little bit, I also wanna add a Halloween food pick. I have quite a lot of these to choose from. But for today's lunch, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the skeleton to go along with our skeleton pizza. Now in this back section, I'm just gonna add a handful of carrot chips. I'm also gonna add some ranch to dip them in. And then for the snack today, something extra spooky. I recently picked up these ghost and bat chips at Trader Joe's. These look so fun. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add these in this section here, and I'm going to fill in the space around our pizza skull. While I was at Trader Joe's, I also picked up these Halloween gummies. So these are just like fruit snacks, they come in these really fun little Halloween bags, and inside the fruit snacks are shaped like bats and jack-lanterns and skeletons. It's really a cute little fun treat. And now that is everything in today's lunch. For their drink, the kids can take water or they can take a pouch of Goulade. Good morning, guys. For today's lunch, I have something really fun planned, and I decided to bring out my old lunch boxes. Now, I used to use these ones all the time, and I still really like them. I'm going to start by adding a little bit of decoration to these boxes, and then I'm gonna move on to the main course. Now, I've seen this idea floating around on Pinterest for quite a while, 
but I'm gonna try to make my own version. And for this, I'm going to need some guacamole. So I'm gonna start with just three pieces of bread. And I want these pieces of bread to be a little bit more of a rectangle shape, so I'm going to trim off just a little bit of the crust on each side. So now that my bread is a little bit more rectangle shaped, I'm going to bring it over to my toaster and pop them in. Now surprisingly, these look really good. I have to admit that nine times out of 10, I end up burning the toast. For my next step, I'm going to add probably about two tablespoons of guacamole onto each piece of bread. Now I'm saving a lot of time here by just using the store prepared guacamole. I don't know about you guys, but I don't really have enough time in the morning to make my own guacamole, so this is perfect. All of my kids love avocados and guacamole, and because this is bright green, it's gonna be perfect for this lunch. So now that I have the guacamole nice and spread out, it's time to cut the cheese. White cheddar cheese to be exact. So I'm adding two oval pieces of cheese to each bread, followed by two slices of olive, just like that. Now as you can tell, these are already looking very spooky, but I'm not quite done yet. Next, I'm going to add some olives. I did go ahead and cut these in two quarters, and I'm just lining them up across the top of the bread. Now this is supposed to look like hair. Now if you haven't already guessed it, I am making a Frankenstein toast, but I want these to be cute little happy Frankenstein guys. So I'm gonna be adding half a slice of pepperoni. That way these guys have a big smile. Now I'm going to finish these guys off by adding a few more little pieces of olive. And the idea is that these look kind of like the stitching that you might find on a Frankenstein's face. And there you have it, Frankenstein avocado toast. Now because I toasted the bread first, it shouldn't get soggy in the lunchbox. And because I'm using guacamole, there's a little bit of lime juice mixed in, and that's gonna help our guacamole stay nice and green and not turn all brown in the lunchbox. Now moving on to the vegetable. For today's lunch, I'm gonna be adding in some celery sticks. So I'll go ahead and cut these into small enough pieces to fit in the lunchbox. Then I'm going to turn these into a lunchtime classic I'm gonna fill each one with a little bit of chunky peanut butter. Now, so far these look like regular ants on a log, but instead of adding raisins for this, I thought it'd be really spooky to add some eye sprinkles instead. I'm gonna go ahead and add just a few of the teeny tiniest eyeball sprinkles right on top of the peanut butter. These stick so well. And check it out, you guys. This celery has its eye on you. In today's lunch, I'm going super classic. This is seriously a quick idea that anyone can do. I'm just gonna take a little mandarin orange, and basically all you have to do is take either a Sharpie or a food writer pen, and you just draw a little jack-o'-lantern face directly on the peel. And then I like to take these one step further just so they look even more like a real jack-o'-lantern. I'm gonna take a little paring knife and very carefully cut a little X on the top of my orange. Not very deep, I don't want the juices to fall out or anything. Then I'm gonna take a little tiny piece of celery that I saved and I'm going to very carefully poke it down inside the orange, just like that. These make such cute little stems for our jack-o'-lanterns and it's so easy to do. Now so far these lunches are looking awesome but I do have a few more things I want to add. For the kids' lunches, I'm also gonna be throwing in some go-go squeeze. They love this stuff, and right now the stores are selling these really fun Halloween versions with the cute little characters on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the kids each one of these. For today's snack, I'm gonna start by adding some pretzels, but these aren't just any pretzels. These are the special Halloween ones. This includes cute little pumpkin-shaped pieces and bat-shaped pieces. So I'll go ahead and fill up this section of the snack box. And then on the other side, a sweet treat. I'm gonna add in a scoop of this Monster Mash popcorn. Now I found this at Walmart, and it's basically a mixture of caramel corn, popcorn, pretzels, it's a really fun mix and a really fun color for Halloween. And then lastly, to go along with the pretzels, I'm also gonna throw in a little wedge of Laughing Cow cheese. My kids love to dip their pretzels in this cheese, and I think it's a good way to get some protein into their snack. So now I have their lunch ready, I have their snacks for after school ready. For today's lunch, the kids are just gonna take their water bottles. Hey guys, so for today's lunch, I have a very special theme in mind. 
check out my fingernails, they're a little bit of a hint. If you guessed the Day of the Dead, you would be correct. So for today's lunch, I'm actually gonna be starting with the snack slash treat first. For this, I'm starting with some pieces of wheat bread. Now I did go ahead and try my best to cut these breads out into a skull shape. Next, I'm gonna take a little bit of cream cheese icing and I'm going to spread it all over the top of the bread. Now the idea is to sort of make these like a fruit pizza. So next I'm going to add several slices of kiwi. I went ahead and used my flower shaped cutter for this and I'm placing these pretty much in the center of the bread so that they'll look like eyes. Next, I'm gonna be adding one little mandarin orange for the mouth. I'm going to add a blueberry for the nose. And then finally, I'm also gonna be adding some mini M&Ms all around to make this a little bit more fun and colorful. This little snack treat is super easy to make and your kids could definitely help you make these. You could pretty much use any fruit or any treats you wanted. You could even add sprinkles. Don't those look fun, you guys? I just love the way these turned out. Now for the main course of today's lunch, I'm actually gonna be putting together some Halloween Lunchables. Recently, I was at a grocery store called Aldi and they had lots of different kinds of Halloween themed cheeses. They have this pumpkin shaped one that actually has pumpkin spice in it. That sounds interesting. They also had this Frankenstein cheese. This has a little bit of sage flavoring and it's bright green, which is interesting. Now this cheese over here actually has some strawberry flavoring added to it. And then this cheese here is just plain cheddar. For our Lunchables today, I'm actually just gonna use a combination of the green sage cheese and the regular cheddar cheese. I really think my kids are going to like these ones the most. In this section, I'm gonna add the cheese. And in this other section, the crackers. Now in this front section, I'm also gonna be adding some slices of cucumber. I did go ahead and take a couple of the cucumbers and I added a little jack-o'-lantern face in there. It would take a lot of time for me to make every single one of these into a jack-o'-lantern, so I just added one per lunchbox. And then in this other section, I'm gonna be adding a scoop of fruit salad. And this is basically all of the fruits left over from making these sugar skulls. And then I'm gonna add in this really cute food pick. It totally goes with today's theme. Now there is just one more thing I want to add into today's lunch and that is some rice pudding. This is a Mexican style rice pudding and there's cinnamon on there, it's really good. These come in cute tiny little cups, perfect for throwing into a lunch. And just for fun, I went ahead and took my Sharpie marker and I drew a little ghost face on the side of the container. This lunch is definitely going to need a spoon, for the drink, the kids are just gonna take their water bottles. And then that is it. That's everything for today's lunch. Check it out, you guys. Today's lunch was a total win. Everybody loved the little fruit pizza skull. All of the vegetables are gone. Most of the fruit salad is gone. This lunch was definitely a win. Okay guys, so for today's lunch, I have a very special theme in mind, and that would be a Harry Potter lunch. Now you guys probably know I am a huge Harry Potter fan. After all, I do have a daughter named Lily and a son named Griffin. So yeah, huge fan here. Check it out, you guys. This is the unofficial Harry Potter cookbook. Now I found this on Amazon, hashtag not sponsored. And if you are a true Harry Potter fan and you love cooking, this is such a a fun book. When I was planning this Harry Potter lunch, I thought I would look through this book and pick out a couple of recipes because there really are a ton of very interesting recipes in here, some that are very British as well. But you guys, even though these recipes look super fun, they're not really the type of recipe that would be quick and easy enough to throw into a school lunch. So instead, I've come up with my own Harry Potter themed lunch that I think will be super quick and easy to make. To make the treat for this lunch, you really only need one ingredient ingredient, which is chocolate. But instead of using a regular chocolate, I'm going to be using some of these Wilton brand candy melts. Now, these little candy melts come in lots of different colors, but for what I'm making, I want the classic chocolate. I'm just going to empty one entire bag into this microwave safe bowl, and I'm going to pop it in the microwave to get it nice and melted. And now the only other thing I need to make these treats is this really fun frog-shaped silicone mold. That's right, you guys, I am making some chocolate frog. Now, of course, if you guys are Harry Potter fans, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm just taking my time here and I'm very slowly filling each little crevice 
of the pan, but I'm also trying not to overfill it as well. And now anytime I'm making molded chocolate, I always like to give the pan a good tap just to release any air bubbles that might be trapped inside. And now you guys, that's pretty much it for these chocolate frogs. Okay, I'm ready to put together the rest of the lunch. So for this sandwich today, I decided to go ahead and use some of this non-style sandwich bread. This non bread is fluffy. It's also a little bit chewy. It makes an excellent sandwich. Sandwich. And of course, I like that their bread is already round and it's nice and sturdy, which is exactly what I want for today's sandwich. So as you can see, I already started by adding a thin layer of cream cheese to each piece of bread first. Now I am using cream cheese instead of mayonnaise for this. And then for the sandwich filling itself, I'm adding a couple of slices of roast beef. On top of that, I'm also adding one slice of this English style cheddar cheese. And then I'm going to top it all off with just a few slices of English cucumber. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close this up, but I'm not quite done with this sandwich yet. I'm actually going to be adding one more layer to this, kind of like an open-faced sandwich. So on the top piece here, I'm going to add one more thin layer of cream cheese. Then on top of that, I'm going to add a big nine followed by a small three and a small four to make it nine and three quarters. Now, of course, this nine and three quarters is in reference to platform in nine and three quarters, which is where you can find the Hogwarts Express, which is the train that students take to Hogwarts. And you guys, because I wanted these numbers to be darker in color, I actually made them by cutting out pieces of pumpernickel bread since it is nice and dark. Now, my kids have never tried pumpernickel bread, so I'm not quite sure if they're going to like it. I hope they do. It's basically a kind of dense rye bread, so it does have kind of a distinct flavor. You guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if you're a fan of pumpernickel bread or not. So there you have it, guys. I think the kids are going to love these sandwiches, and I think they turned out super cute. So now that I I have the main course done, I can move on to the rest of the lunch. Now for the fruit today, I'm going to be adding a combination of both blueberries and raspberries. I'm just going to fill up this section with both berries and then to add even more Harry Potter flair to this lunch, I also have some really cute cupcake rings I want to add in. I have one for each house. Then in the back here, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up this section with edamame. Of course, that bright green color definitely represents the house of Slytherin. And I'm just gonna top the edamame with a few pieces of carrot. I went ahead and cut out an H and a P, symbolizing Harry Potter. I think that looks so awesome, but it's definitely something my kids would enjoy eating as well, which is pretty important for this lunch. Next up, I'm going to be adding today's snack. I thought it'd be really funny, since this is a Harry Potter themed lunch after all to add some cheese puffs. These of course remind me of Hufflepuff House and they are the perfect color as well so I'm just going to add in a handful of these. And then for the treat section of course I'm going to break out those chocolate frogs that I made yesterday. Now these didn't come out perfectly. I definitely lost a couple of frog toes but overall they're still really cute and I know the kids are going to love them. Now for each lunch, I'm just gonna add in one of these chocolate frogs. So not too many, and that's because I wanna leave room for some gummy snakes. I feel like you can't make a Harry Potter themed lunch without some kind of snake, right? Since Harry Potter himself knows how to talk to snakes, and most importantly, the snake is a symbol of Slytherin House. Now these little gummies are actually called twin snakes because in the package you actually get two stuck together, but they're really small. Now of course I definitely wanted to make a special Harry Potter themed drink for this lunch as well. I'm gonna make a drink that I'm calling Gillyweed Juice. The first ingredient for this drink is some of this no sugar added orange flavor fruit drink. Now this is actually a drink concentrate and I found it in the British section of my grocery store. So I feel like it totally goes with my Harry Potter theme, but to make it green, I'm going to mix it with some of this green Gatorade. Now I know that might sound weird, but trust me, it's actually a really tasty combination. It's basically orange plus lime, which makes it really fruity and citrusy and delicious. Then I'm gonna pour in the green Gatorade until about here. Then I'm gonna fill up the rest of this bottle with some sparkling water, just to add a little bit of fizz. 
And then there you have it guys, check it out. This Gillyweed juice is delicious and refreshing. Plus, I love the bright green color. Hey guys, today's lunch is going to be nut free. And for the main course, I'm going to be making an open faced sandwich inspired by Jack Skellington. Now you guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if you're a fan of The Nightmare Before Christmas. I think Jack Skellington is such a spooky character and I'm gonna try to make today's sandwich look just like him. For this, I'm gonna start by using some small round pita bread. This is actually whole wheat pita bread and because it's already in a nice round shape, it's gonna be perfect for our Jack Skellington sandwich. Now this is gonna be a little bit different than the sandwiches I normally make. For this sandwich, instead of adding mayo, I'm going to add some black bean hummus instead. If you've never had black bean hummus, it's actually really good. To me, it tastes like really good bean dip. Now my kids are usually big fans of hummus, so I'm hoping that they're gonna like this. Now I'm just spreading this black bean hummus all over the surface of the bread. And next comes the cheese. And don't these look so cool, you guys? This is literally just three slices of provolone cheese. And using my little Jack Skellington napkin as a guide, I just took a paring knife and very carefully cut out some circles for the eyes. I cut out his mouth and his nose. This is actually really easy to do. It just takes a little bit of patience. Now I'm gonna take these slices of cheese and actually place them directly on top of the black bean hummus. I think this is gonna be a super tasty combination. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get these into the lunch boxes, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add in some tortilla chips. But not just any tortilla chips. These are actually fall leaf shaped tortilla chips. I get these at Trader Joe's as well. Seriously you guys, Trader Joe's has so many fun Halloween items. And when I go there, I definitely stock up on them. These tortilla chips come in several different colors and they're in really fun leaf shapes, but they really do just taste like regular tortilla chips. So I went ahead and filled in this space around our sandwich with all of our chips. And to go along with these chips, something I know the kids are gonna be super excited about, some super bright green guacamole. I think this guacamole is the perfect color for a Halloween themed lunch, but I also think the kids are really gonna enjoy dipping their tortilla chips in here. It sounds like a delicious combination. Now for the fruit today, I'm doing something really easy. This is literally just an applesauce pouch. I stuck on some googly eye stickers and then I wrapped it in a little bit of paper. You could use crepe paper or you could even use toilet paper. I did go ahead and secure that with a little bit of tape on the back side. And the idea is to make the applesauce pouch look like a mummy. To make him look a little bit more scary, I'm also gonna add in some angry eyebrows with my Sharpie marker. And then just for fun, I'm also gonna draw in a little monster mouth. These little applesauce pouches would make a really fun Halloween craft for your kids to help make. Now moving on to this back section, for our special treat today, I'm also gonna be adding in a few of these little pumpkin cookies. Now these these are just store-bought cookies, but they are so cute. I'm just gonna add one or two into the lunchbox. And then last but not least, for the kids' drink today, they can choose to either take a Kool-Aid or they can just take water. The kids are back home now, time to see how they did. Both Mackenzie and Jackson ate most of theirs, but Lily did complain a little bit that the black bean hummus was a little on the spicy side. Overall though, I think they really love the guacamole. I would definitely put that in a lunch again. Good morning guys. So today I'm back with another super cute but easy Halloween lunch. And for the main course, I'm gonna be making something that could be served hot or at room temperature. I'm gonna be making some mummy bread. Now for this, I'm starting with some biscuit dough. These are the grand biscuits, which makes them a little bit bigger than the normal ones. And these are the regular biscuits. They're not the flaky ones. I'm not sure if those would work for this recipe. I've never tried the flaky ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up these biscuits. Oh yes, and just in case you don't have biscuit dough or maybe you don't like biscuit dough, you could also make these with just a regular slice of bread or even an English muffin. Those would work really well for this too. I'm gonna take each biscuit and using my rolling pin, I'm going to flatten it out and create a larger circle. 
And then once I have all of my biscuits flattened out, I'm going to add them to a cookie sheet. Next, I'm gonna take a little bit of store-prepared pizza sauce, or marinara sauce, either one is fine, and I'm going to add a spoonful to each piece of dough, and then spread it out. Next comes the cheese, and I think it's really important that you use string cheese for this. I like to use at least one piece of string cheese per dough, and before I add the string cheese on here, I want to rip the cheese into smaller pieces. This is really gonna help these guys look like a mummy. So now I'm adding my strips of string cheese sort of haphazardly all over the top of my dough, but I am leaving just a little space where the mummy's eyes are going to go. But at this point, I'm not adding the eyes yet. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into the oven for about 10 minutes or until the dough is completely cooked. Now while those are in the oven, I'm gonna move on to some easy Halloween themed fruit. And since these are so easy, I definitely wanted to throw them into today's lunch. Basically, I'm just taking a fruit cup and then using a Sharpie marker, I'm just gonna draw a little jack-o'-lantern face on the top of each container. And then just like that, our mummy bread is ready for the next step. I'm just gonna add two little slices of olive to each piece of bread. That way, these look like little mummy eyes peeking out. Super cute and super easy. Now, if I was making these at home, I would definitely serve them right away but they're also good in the lunchbox just at room temperature. Now, speaking of the lunchbox, I'm gonna go ahead and add these right into there and then move on to the vegetable. In this back section, I'm gonna go ahead and add some sugar snap peas and then I'm also gonna throw in some pumpkin-shaped carrots. To make these, I used a whole carrot and I very carefully notched out two little triangles at the top. That way, when I slice this carrot, I'm left with pieces that kind of look like pumpkins. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a few pieces in here. These are super easy to make, but they do take a little bit of time. So I'm just adding a couple into each lunch, not a ton of them. Over on this side, I'm gonna add a little container of ranch. This is to go along with the sugar snap peas and the carrots. And then in this other section, I have just enough space for a sweet treat. For today's lunch, I'm gonna add maybe one or two of these pumpkin Jojo's. Now these are a lot like an Oreo cookie, but I get these ones at Trader Joe's, and these ones are seriously good. They really do taste like a crunchy pumpkin pie. And I'm gonna put just two of these in each lunchbox. Now this next part I call a happy accident. I was adding a few loose peas into the vegetable section, and as you can see, this one rolled into the center of the olive on our mummy pizza, and I actually think this looks really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and put peas into all of the eyes. I think they definitely look more spooky that way. And then last but not least for the kids' snack today, I'm also gonna throw in a little package of these Halloween goldfish crackers. Now really, these are just regular goldfish crackers, but they are in a really cute Halloween bag. Hey guys, for today's lunch, I've planned to make a spooky monster soup. Now since I want the soup to stay nice and hot by lunchtime, I've already filled up all the thermoses with boiling hot water. Right before I fill up the thermoses, I will dump that water out. Priming the thermoses definitely helps keep the soup hot longer. So the first ingredient for this soup is hot dogs. Now I know that sounds a little bit weird, but stick with me, I'll show you what I mean. I'm just using some all beef hot dogs. We really like these ones from Costco. And I'm going to cut these hot dogs into smaller pieces. These will definitely fit better in our soup and they're the perfect size for making little monsters. Next, I'm gonna take some thin spaghetti. This is not cooked or anything. Now, of course, you could also use regular spaghetti, but this is just what I have in the pantry, so I'm going with it. So now I'm just taking the uncooked spaghetti noodles and I'm poking them through the sides of the hot dog pieces just like this. And I really like to fill these guys up. I put at least eight pieces of spaghetti per hot dog. Now this is really easy to do, especially if you have yourself a little helper. My kids love to help me make these. So now that we have all of these done, they're looking really spooky already. I'm going to add all of these to a big pot of boiling hot water. And I'm gonna cook them until the spaghetti is soft. Now after the spaghetti is cooked, these really do look like little monsters. And what I like to do is go ahead and add them into some store-bought soup. 
These are the Joe's O's I get from Trader Joe's. They're basically like a SpaghettiO type soup. I think with that red tomato soup in there with the noodles, it looks really creepy. So now I went ahead and added the soup to the thermoses. I'll go ahead and get those lids on tight and then move on to our fruits and vegetables. For the fruit today, I'm gonna go ahead and add some green grapes. And then I'm going to decorate this section with this really cute jack-o'-lantern pick. And then in this back section, I'm just adding a few slices of cucumber. And I just went ahead and cut this in a checkerboard pattern, just so it looks a little bit more interesting in the lunchbox. Now, for the kids' snack today, I'm also going to be throwing in some cheese. So for the girls, I'm taking some light Baby Bell cheese. And then using a paring knife, I very carefully removed some of the wax. So now these look like a jack-o'-lantern. And then for my son, Jackson, he doesn't really like regular Baby Bell cheese. So for him, I went ahead and took a regular string cheese. And using a Sharpie, I just drew a little ghost face directly on the package. Again, this is one of the easiest and quickest but really cute items that you can make for a Halloween themed lunch. And then last but not least, I also have a very special sweet treat. I'm gonna give each kid their own Halloween sugar cookie. Now believe it or not, I actually found these at Target and they are so adorable. They have lots of different kinds of Halloween cookies and they're kind of on the larger side so one is definitely enough for each lunchbox. And then of course they also have their monster soup and to drink today the kids are just gonna take their water bottles. <laughs> 